One of the things that I want to mention quickly about you know linear programming, um, you know, is that a linear programming uh, is stated in a standard form, and since this is a lecture, we are very dealing with uh, notations. I want to quickly write down the notations for the linear programming problem, right? So, if you have a linear programming problem, then essentially what you try to do is you are trying to find x, right, where you know where you are trying to minimize a function of x which is written as something like this where i is equal to 0 to n ti xi so your coefficients are ci's and xi's and this are also subject to linear constraints right so the constraints are also going to be in the form of linear combination where i equal to 1 to n and then you have a ji xi is equal to bj okay where you know um, these are you know uh, equality constraint that has been provided to it, right? Where j could be equal to one, two, and so on till n, and then minus xi. This is the negative null form is greater than or equal to z. Where bj, sorry, where bj ci and aji are constant. So if you write this problem and if you find a problem which is in this formulated in this nature right this will be essentially a linear programming problem okay and this is an index format of writing linear programming so this is like index form of linear programming now as i mentioned you can write the same linear programming problem in a vectorized form so let's go ahead and write that too so i will just erase this so that this is the index form but there is a vectorized way of writing this too. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So the vector way, vector vectorized version uh, is. Uh, something like this of this linear programming okay what what is this is minimize with respect to with respect to x right the vector x and then coefficient of vector transposed and let me write it below so that we are in the right place where i say that minimize with respect to x we have coefficient transpose x and that gives my objective function. So this becomes my objective function. Okay. And then subject to we will have something like this, which is ax is equal to b. And here I am trying to bring in the determinant that I have discussed in the notation format, right? So, essentially, you can use this format to write all the constraint that you have, right? So, ax equal to b and then minus x is equal to or is less than equal to 0 vector, okay? And that is another way of rewriting the same set of equation that we wrote in the indexes format previously. And let me give you a simple example what this a and b means in the context of actual problem okay so if you have right right uh, let's say you know a problem where which is something like this minimize with respect to x1 and you know vector x where you have coefficient which is like 2 3 multiplied by x1 x2 right those are the vectors so essentially what we are doing we are minimizing an objective function which is given by 2 x1 plus 3x2. So, this is our objective function, right? Now, let us say if they are subjected to these two constraints below, which is 1x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 0. Let us say that is the first constraint that I have. And then the second constraint that I have is 3x1 plus 5x2 is equal to 0, right? I can take both of these two equations together and I can write it in the following format, where a is 1, right? I take 1 from here, 2 from here, 
3 from here and 5 from here, I write that in the, this format. And then I take B and B is 0, 0. I write this in this format. And from there, uh, you know, I can go here, substitute this A here, substitute this B here, and that, that will be this way I can write this two equation in the matrix and vector format, right? So hopefully you see that, okay, something like this could be written in two different ways, uh, index format and in the vectorized format, which is here. So in this, even though the, we have this problem, here in this case, the C is going to be equal to 2, 3, A is going to be 1, 2, 3, 5, and B is going to be 0, 0, and that represents a linear programming problem too, okay? So these are the two main uh, ways of writing, and the vectorized version is what I showed in this example for. Okay, so, if, uh, so what are the linear programming problem? If the objective function and all the constraints are linear, okay, then the optimization problem is known as linear programming problem. Okay, and again, optimization problem is stated in the standard form, which I have already written here, which is basically this, uh, x minimize fx equal to ci and xi, subject to this, and this is the indices way of writing the linear programming problem. Whereas I have also discussed the second approach or a vector version of writing the linear programming which will be written in this format minimized with respect to vector x, c, vector c transpose multiplied by vector x and then subject to a matrix multiplied by vector x is equal to b and minus x vector is less than equal to 0. So that is the notation that is typically used two different ways of writing the linear programming problems that we have. Again, the example that I gave, in that case, these are the a's and the b's that will be representing the overall problem. Now, similarly, we have also what is known as non-linear programming problems, right? And here what we have is that if any of the functions, and this is an important distinction that you need to remember, it not necessarily is pertinent with respect to objective functions, okay? If even the constraints of the optimization problems are non-linear, then the overall problem becomes a non-linear optimization problem. So, if only one of the functions representing either the objective function or the constraint is nonlinear, then you basically have a nonlinear programming problem. Okay, and this is the most general form of programming problem, and all other problems could be considered as a special cases of nonlinear programming problems. Okay, so with that, I want to stop, and I hopefully uh, think that you have got some intuition behind the major notations that are used inside the optimization problem, and also you learned about the different classification possible in optimization problem. And I want to repeat that if you understand how to identify different classes of optimization problem, then you will be easily able to find and select proper algorithm which is suited, suited to that specific class of optimization problem. With that, we will stop and we will come back to the next set of lecture where we will begin with an algorithmic approach to solve unconstrained optimization problem and we will begin with the simplest case where we have just a single variable. And from there, we will gain insights and intuition of how the algorithmic approach in the optimization algorithm work and then that we leverage to, you know, uh, deal with more complex concepts in overall optimization problem. Thank you.